So it is truly an ungodly freaking hour. Um, no cardio today. No cardio today. Schedule does not allow it. It's, it's fucking... I don't even want to say what hour it is, but I gotta head back to school, pick up some shit, and then off to the airport to hunker down. Hunker down for the longest freaking flight of my life. But well worth it. Well worth it to visit the fans and just all, well not even just visit the fans, but also see all the freaking nutty lifters across the Atlantic over the UK are. So that is going to be, that's going to be freaking fun. That'll make 16 hours in a plane bored out of my mind if they don't have Wi-Fi. Well worth it. But plan now is quads. And I say now, really, it's going to be in like an hour and a half when I get to the gym I'm going to train at before I stop at the house to, uh, before I stop at the house and pick up my stuff. But close enough. So quads only, um, just for, just for clarity's sake, I will explain the workout split that I'm going to be doing for the next little while instead of, instead of you doing back routinely, you know, every time in the split, uh, shoulders have been kind of just thrown in whenever. I think that's how I'm going to treat back or not. I think I know that's how I'm going to treat back for the short term because I want to bias growth of my legs, my arms, and my freaking chest. <laughs> so if I'm taken back out of the equation from as frequently as I normally do it to just kind of every so often, I think the workout split will look as follows. Quads, chest, hamstrings and biceps, triceps on their own so just five muscle groups looping around because uh, i want them to catch up and i want to give them special treatment compared to my back and my shoulders because frankly when i hit a fucking back lat spread compared to you know literally a fucking professional bodybuilder of a similar weight class to me in terms of just the back itself pretty comparable but everything else everything else needs some freaking work and I've always had a pretty strong back um, to the point where I've gone months earlier in my, you know, kind of journey or whatever, where, hmm, where I wouldn't even train back. So I'm really just sort of recreating a workout split that I did, you know, years ago because I could tell my back was ahead of the game compared to everything else. And I think I got to kind of take charge and chill out a little bit on my lat decimation and trap destruction so I can focus my energy towards greater things. Bigger arms, triceps, biceps, chest, and legs. And then also this is going to be good for me because I like training quads on their own anyway. It kind of has a certain allure. The likes of which I can actually explain. <sighs> but before I do, don't uh, don't be concerned about the yawning. That's just because I'm freaking sleepy. By the time I take two scoops of pineapple hostility amped, I know I'll be in business. I know I'll be in freaking business. Plus, I got a bunch of Gatorade and fucking fruit snacks to eat beforehand, so I will have a solid amount of carbs in my system. But quads only, I think... If I do quads only for a few weeks on end, I don't know if I'm going to be able to go back uh, because I've done it before and I really enjoy it because whenever I do legs, for one thing, it takes pretty fucking long because hamstrings, they're a big muscle. Yeah. Hamstrings are a pretty big muscle and you know, usually I like to train hamstrings in their entirety before I start my quad portion of the leg day. So by the time I even get to quads, I'm still sweaty. I'm still tired. I am a little bit, you know, out of breath because I've literally just worked out an entire muscle group. So I think I've been limiting my quad gains because I've been doing hamstrings before quads. Um, 
But then again, if I flip it on the other side, the reason why I do hamstrings before quads is because having a hamstring pump and just going through the whole motion of a hamstring workout does make my knees feel pretty good. And it especially feels good in the bottom or in the hole of any pressing movement for legs, be it a squat, leg press, sissy something, whatever. Having a hamstring pump does feel good. So, even though, oh my, oh, I can't stop breaking the arm. <clears throat> so even though I'm not gonna hit the hamstrings today, I am gonna hit them in two days with biceps, which I'll see how that goes. Honestly, I think I might be more inclined to want to do chest with biceps just because it'll feel better. But uh, whatever. That's neither here nor there. Um, fuck, what was I about to say? But yeah, so even though I am just going to hit quads on their own, I'm going to do a little bit of hamstrings. In, not in terms of actual working sets, but leg extensions is going to be the first movement because it warms up my quads very well. And then moving into any pressing movement with a little bit of a quad pump, I always enjoy it. So at least two sets of leg extensions before anything is usually my starter for quads. Uh, but I'll probably add some single leg leg extensions, just or leg curls rather, eh, just so the back of my knees kind of warmed up, you know. Like even though it's not doing anything, especially not in leg extensions, you know, my hamstrings aren't doing jack. When it you know, when I switch over to a pressing movement, I'm not sure if I'm going to squat crazy heavy today. I might just stick with more... Well, I'll figure it out. I, the workout's in like two hours. I'm not even really thinking about it yet in terms of what I'm really going to do specifically. Uh, but by the time I move on to pressing, usually... It's not like I feel my hamstrings come into play too much, but they definitely do. Especially on some leg presses. And a little bit on squats. Hmm. Oh, so sorry for yawning so much. I know I'm. I know I probably have half of you yawning with me if you're watching the car talk in its entirety. But you can't neglect the fact that, uh, or you can't forget the fact that your hamstrings will come into play in all pressing movements. I pulled my right hamstring really good last Christmas because uh, I was. I was doing a machine that I hadn't done before, like a certain kind of laying leg curl, and I jumped into it too fit, too fast. And also, I was dieted down, so I was a little bit, I was probably slightly dehydrated. Uh, so, you know, we all hear bodybuilders pull stuff, unless they get hurt from doing too much weight. Usually, you're more prone to just a random incident when you're extra lean, because you don't have so much fucking food and carbs and whatever else floating around. But I pulled my hamstring like a mofo. Fucker was hurt. Uh, no hamstrings for a while. It was about like two months. Uh, and even though my quads felt good, I would try to, I tried to squat one day, like only a, like a month out or so. Or not even a month out, like two weeks after, or a week, I don't know, like pretty soon after. And, you know, I go to squat, I do a plate, I do two plates, I do three plates. And then by the time I, or no, on that three plate warm up set, I mean, only two reps, I could feel my hamstring was fucking with me to the point where I think if I tried to really do four plates or five plates, I probably would have re pulled it even fucking worse. So even though when you think of a pressing movement, especially in your mind, you're, you're you're probably, I'm not going to say for sure, but you're probably visualizing your quad doing most of the work as though you're you know, extending your leg throughout the press. Like, let's say this is the, you know what I'm saying. Even though you're usually thinking about your quads, hamstrings do come into play. Uh, so really all I'm trying to say there is if you're doing a quad biased leg day or you're just doing quads on their own, you're probably going to benefit from a little bit of a hamstring workout. Or a hamstring warm-up. Nothing crazy, but just a little bit goes a long way, you know. Like, before I do chest, I always sit on the cables for a while, warm up my triceps, my chest itself, my back a little bit, but most importantly, my rotator cuff. You wouldn't necessarily think it needs too much warm-up because it's not doing much work, per se. Right? When you do a set of heavy bench, you're thinking about your chest, really nothing else. But... If your accessory muscles aren't properly exposed or warmed up with some weight, 
could be asking for trouble. So really all I'm trying to, I'm just trying to tell you a cautionary tale. If you're about to do a set of squats, do a little bit of leg extension. No, no, do a little bit of hamstring work first. And I would, I would assume you'd probably feel a little bit better. Just a touch, just a freaking touch. So when it comes to my quad training, a few things jump out compared to me when I think about every other lifter. I don't really love split squats, Bulgarians. No, no, Bulgarians? Is that the... Bul oh yeah, Bulgarian split squats. See, I can't even remember the freaking name. Uh, not a huge Bulgarian guy. And... I'm, and I'm not saying I don't like it. I haven't really, I've never really gotten into it much, uh, but I don't do many split squats or uh, any walking lunges, rather. And I know why I don't do Bulgarians because I've done them before. This is actually a lift I've tried myself and I didn't care for, just because I get so much glute. And I've tried it in all sorts of different ways, man. Different foot placements and angles and distances from the bench and whatever. It always freaking blows up my glutes. And I think I've said it enough. I don't want bigger glutes. I want my quads and my hamstrings to grow. I don't need my butt to. Relative to everything else. I guess when I think of my strong points or, you know, if I think of kind of the overall shape that I want to grow into, I'd say my shoulders are ahead of the game, number one. Back probably number two, but then maybe a little bit behind back and tied is my glutes, my freaking booty. I don't, it's okay. It doesn't need more work. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't, I don't know, man. They just don't do it for me. And then I'm also not too inclined to do a ton of single leg pressing movements. Kind of just because they take a long time, you know. Like with some, and I, when it comes to leg extensions, I like single leg leg extensions. Sometimes just because the leg extension stack doesn't go heavy enough and I have to use one leg to get enough weight for a good set. But also because it doesn't put me out of breath so much. Because when I do a double leg set of leg extensions, then I have to hold myself down with a lot of fucking force. It's kind of, it's tricky to breathe because you're sort of bracing in a way. And then you're doing both legs at once. So you've got two quads just sucking oxygen out of your freaking lungs that you have to replenish you know kind of hits me hard takes me a little bit longer to recover from than if i were to do one leg at a time where it's less weight i'm only gonna have to hold myself down with half the force it's easier to breathe and also i kind of like the feeling of flexing just one quad at a time so with leg extensions i like single sided once but with leg press there's no getting around you know, the three minutes of heavy breathing after a heavy set of leg press or Smith squats or whatever. You know, insert heavy pressing movement for quads. So I think in a way, I almost just want to get it, at least the set part of it done as quickly as possible so that I can take a couple deep breaths and recover instead of just, you know, lengthen the period of time that the set takes. If you, uh, if you can kind of get what I'm saying there. So, but when it comes to the, the walking lunges, I do like the idea. And frankly, I think the only reason that I haven't tried them out is fear of the unknown. Because right now, I know that when I go do leg extensions, they're going to feel good. When I do maybe Smith machine squats or hack squats or maybe... Um, a machine leg press superset where I pre-exhaust with exhaust, where I pre-exhaust with leg extensions first and then jump onto it, or you know any combination of you know, quad movements that I usually do, I know that they're going to work. So it's kind of my safety net in a way. So really, I think I'm just being a freaking baby, and I need to throw, you know, one plate on my back and walk up and down the turf just to freaking try it. But I don't want to dilly-dally too much. The last thing I want to do is make myself late for a flight. But even me saying that right there, that's probably just me playing into my fucking own mentality of like, don't do anything new. So I think, I'm, yeah, maybe not today, but next quad day, make sure 
that I do a reasonable amount of sets of walking lunges at the end of quads. That's uh, that's typically where I see it. More of just kind of a burny or a burnouty style to kind of wreck them. But when it comes to walking lunges, especially from big ass ex Olympia characters, just, I mean, behemoths, they only have good things to say. So I'm gonna try to work on breaking out of my bubble. Uh, but today's probably gonna be leg extensions. Maybe barbell squats, not insanely heavy. Mm. Hack squats, potentially, and then, you know, whatever else comes to mind. It's, I, for the beginner, and I say this a lot, you're probably best off having a reasonably rigid workout routine where, you know, your workout looks pretty similar week to week, and you try to focus on improving your numbers. Try to focus on improving your strength, your progressive overload, as it were. You know, if you squatted 225 for 10 last week, either increase reps, try 225 for 12, see if you can make it, or increase weight, you know, try to do 250 for 8 or something. When it comes to my squat progression, and I've kind of been backing off on it a little bit, like uh, because sometimes my adductors kind of flare up, and it sort of keeps me from really pushing the squat insanely heavy. But the heaviest I've ever worked up to, because I think, it's not like I think my quads aren't capable right now of doing like six plates for reps, but strength is partially a skill and something that you get exposed to. You know, this guy's way smaller than me, way stronger than me. It's just because they practice with heavy weight. But when it comes to me trying to do progressive overload usually at least with squats I mean I'm kind of talking all over the place I got a long drive I'm just uh, just, just bear with me so when it comes to squats how I approach progressive overload and how I think about you know, what I want to do to improve my squat numbers as of late I've kind of been backing off on you know, numbers for quads just making sure you know, I do hard ass sets, make sure they burn, move some weight around, finish with a pump. Uh, but when I do squat consistently, which of course I do plan to do again, don't worry, usually it goes like this. I can do a certain weight for 10 reps. You know, I can do maybe five plates for 10 reps. Right? Let's say I do that for a few weeks. You know, I do five plates for 10, five plates for nine, five, five plates for 11. Usually what I end up waiting for is the day when I get five plates for, eh, sometimes I do this on 11 too, but whenever I can get my top working weight for 12, so if I do five plates for 12 reps and then I rack it, that's my cue. That's an indicator for me. All right, let's up the weight. So then next week, I'm going to try at least maybe 515, maybe even five. 25, just a reasonable jump in weight, sometimes upwards of 50 pounds if I really feel strong on that next day, but at least, you know, 20, 20 something pounds, because if I could get 20 pounds less than that for 12, then I know that just by bumping it up to that 20, 30 pound mark, I'm still going to be getting a pretty reasonable amount of reps in the set. I never really like going under eight reps. That's probably about the lowest that I'd like to go. And sometimes if I get really low, like if I really overestimate my squat strength and I only get like five reps, uh, <laughs> sometimes I'll just drop the weight, like rack it, take two plates off, and then turn it into a drop set just to kind of get that bodybuilding style volume. Whether that's the absolute best approach or not, it's, I'm just telling you what I do or what I've done in the past. I've been a little bit smarter about my strength gauge as of late, so that hasn't really happened. But let's say I get that 525 for eight, then I'm gonna try 525 the next week, or the next leg day, quads, or next quad day, that is. And let's say I get it for nine. Holy crap, I felt extra strong this next day. Get it for 11. And then that's probably my cue, up the weight a little bit, go back. So. That's always been my approach. I've never been one to really 
push like three reps, five reps. It's, I mean, that's powerlifter reps, you know. It's not my, not my thing. But I definitely notice the stronger my quads are and the heavier I can squat for the higher amount of reps. Usually that's got a pretty solid correlation with not only my strength, but also, well, obviously my strength, but also my size, you know. So as I get bigger throughout the bulk, that's usually when my squat gets the heaviest. That's usually when my legs also get the biggest and fullest. So it's not all about weight, but don't forget mass moves mass. So if you can get up to working around with some serious weight, odds are you've got some tree trunks underneath you. And then the process of getting to that heavy weight should also help you grow them. So that's my uh, that's sort of my two cents there when it comes to improving your squat strength. Uh, but for me, quads is not always about pressing. I mean, I've gone months, like six months on end, with no heavy squats. And the primary movement that I do for quads is leg extensions. You know, I'll add some sissy squat stuff too. But really, 95% of the volume for like six months at a time had been leg extensions. And then I come back to squats for whatever reason why I stopped doing them. Usually I chill out on squats when I'm dieting down, just because it's a very you know, full body, exhausting movement. I'm working my lower back, hamstrings, glutes, and quads, which I do like, but you know, it's kind of it's too much at once. So when I diet down, usually I focus a little more on isolation. Um, crap, I was about to say some shit. What was I just saying? Repeat it back to me. When I die, to... Oh yeah, so months on end with just leg extensions being the primary stimulator of my quad size and strength. And then I come back and I'm squatting the same fucking weight. You know, obviously not as heavy. Uh, oh, okay, I'm squatting similar weight. You know, I'm not gonna... I would never go no squats for months and then try to get up to like six plates on a really... Just because, that's nuts. But pretty similar weights, you know, four plates, five plates... And that kind of makes me think leg extensions are pretty cool. Uh, I'd say the only drawback, or the primary drawback, is just the fact that leg extensions can be pretty rough on your knees. Especially if you've already maybe fucked them up from sports or just life. You're walking around on them all the time, it gets worn down. Uh, but at least while I'm still young and supple, leg extensions are my friend. They're, they're my good friend. We tell each other our secrets and we... Uh, give each other good advice. We're that close. But fuck, man, it feels good. I mean, I'm working my quads. I'm contracting them hard. I love leg extensions. So, that being said, if your knees can't take it, and your knees don't love it, then your primary movement should be whatever your knees can handle the most. Be that a hack squat or a barbell squat, smith squat, every other squat variation under the sun. Maybe try to destroy your quads with those, and then pop on the leg extension. Because you won't need so much weight since your quads are already freaking destroyed. And your whole knee, your patella, your whole area in there. Knee, patella, meniscus, MCL, ACL. Every other buzzword under the sun about your knee. It should all be pretty warm since you've kind of exposed it to some weight already. But main idea there. Whatever movement for quads you can load up the most and kind of gives you the best burn slash fatigue slash pump and maybe try to lean into that one pretty heavy but in no way am I saying don't squat right? as much as I love leg extensions if they're old faithful I'm always coming back to them they do me good squats are where you're going to seriously build some trunks squats, leg press hack squats you know, all sorts of freaking varieties I say leg press even though I don't really love it too much but that's just because I get a lot of glute. And for me, I really, I'm just kind of hyper-specific and picky with my leg presses. In the last leg day, I did like this pendulum leg press where the weight didn't move on a sled. It just sort of pivoted, right? And then I was pressing right in the middle of that pivot or of that arm that was holding the weight. And something about it, I'm not sure exactly what, uh, but all quads, minimal glutes, and the fact that it was on a pendulum sort of means that at the bottom of the rep where my knees are closest to my fucking stomach, the weight's actually the lightest. So I don't get that internal like 
abdominal pressure that I usually do with leg press, which I really don't like. Uh, for me, I'm just not a huge fan. I mean, that's why I don't really do, I don't use belts for squats either. This, um, one more, one more little topic and then we can jump to the actual workout. But when it comes to belts, look, I know it's cool to buy a fancy ass belt. You know, either like an old school one or some of these new age fucking, whoosh, you know, clip belts. But do you really need it? No. Like, I see, I see the newest fucking lifters ever with a fancy pants $300 belt. And I never even see him squat. You know, I see him deadlift, but I think delt proper delt. I think belt propaganda is very strong. And if you're in the belt business, you're rolling it. Uh, but so not to knock at you for that, but do you really need a belt? You know, have you squatted without one and you found that it was necessary? I'm not, I'm not saying you're wrong for using one. I'm just saying, you know, don't just. Uh, in all aspects of life, if you can understand why you're doing something instead of just doing it because other people do it, you're going to have a better time. Nobody, uh, let's just say the word sheep mentality is never a positive term. That's never said with a positive connotation. So for me, I've tried belts before. I guess this is, now I'm just talking about all sorts of shit, but I've tried using belts before. Squats bent over rows, eh, I don't know, man, it just doesn't do it for me. Uh, I've never really felt the need, per se. Um, if I do, then I'll slap a belt on. I'll probably get it, like, custom-made, have it say my name on the back. But until I feel the need, I'm going to keep going beltless. Plus, if you squat heavy without a belt, it is a little bit of an ego boost, because people sort of think the belt makes it easier. But for me, it's just more uncomfortable. I think that's enough rambling. This is probably the longest pre-lift talk that's been recorded. But, yeah. In about... I've still got a long drive, so... I'll have time to ponder exactly how I want to go about thrashing quads. <clears throat> and you'll be there to see it. For you, in exactly like 0.5 seconds. But for me, in like... Like le a little bit less than two hours. So let's, uh, should we just record the whole thing? Should we do a two-hour talk? Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Maybe eventually. Uh, no, let's, let's cut to the workout. All right. It's taken me a little bit longer than normal to get my sort of quads and knees warmed up. And part of that I'm definitely going to blame on sitting in the car for two fucking hours. Plus, sitting in the parking lot for like 30 minutes, half sleeping. I waited for the pre to kick in. Uh, so instead of kind of jumping the gun and really loading up a lot of weight right at the get-go, I'm going to start with some more, let's just say sort of ease into weight style sets. So instead of doing as many reps or as much weight as I can do for like 10, 12 reps, which would be fucking, it'd be pretty heavy, but I know it'd be real fucking uncomfortable on my knees right now. So instead of really jumping into it like that, this is, it's going to be a working set, right? I'm going to do five reps on the right leg, five on the left, back and forth, back and forth until I'm totally burned out. It will be a good productive set, but it's also going to serve as a warm up for later. Like I'll do this if I'm in a rush on my arm days, uh, because if I'm going to start with really heavy pushdowns, I need to sit on the cables for a while to get my elbows warmed up and ready to, you know, hold a lot of weight without being on fucking fire. So if I'm in a rush, I'll start with a light squeezing set, which is still going to be a good productive set in my mind, but also is going to get me warm for heavier weight later in the lift. So something to consider. If you've got any nagging pains or whatever else, a longer warm-up may be good. May be good. I know that's kind of crazy coming from me, starting with lighter weight. But look, I'm, a, I'm not a fucking eagle lifter purely. Like, I like it, but... We live in reality. So let's throw this around, go bananas, and continue.
One more. Exact same style. Touch heavier. One more like that, and then let's move on to some kind of pressing movement. Ah. This set is going to be the, the dichotomy of my training, if that's the correct term. I like heavy sets, and I like light squeezing sets. So plan, this is lighter than my first set was. Five reps, five reps, five reps, five reps, back and forth, back and forth. Until I'm satisfactorily fatigued. I'm gonna make sure I kind of hold it at the top two, really squeeze. And then I'm gonna drop the pin all the way down to the stack and try to burn out with uh, double leg leg extensions. I always like doing, well, pretty much double leg leg extensions before I move on to some kind of pressing movement. Just because, I mean, let's say I did my right leg in completion and then moved on to the left one. I feel like when I go to do a press, my left leg's gonna be more tired than the right one because it got like an extra 30 seconds or 45 seconds of rest. Now, that might just be me being OCD, but whatever. Whew. Actually, I'll do some kind of tempo reps here now that I think about it. <clears throat> Yeah. <sighs> 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 
I don't even know if I can do the stack. Oh my god. Okay. That's enough. Ooh. That's enough leg extensions to start with. Oh. Okay. Uh, what do you think? What do you think, viewer? Fellow lifter? Whoa. Pendulum squat? <laughs> or hack squat? I know my decision. See if, uh, see if you guessed right. Fuck. All right. If you guessed pendulum squat, you're correct. So these green bumpers are 100 pounds. Pretty cool, but they're such a fucking bitch to pick up. I can't get a grip on them. I feel like every time I do, I like tweak my forearms because I'm doing like a strong man hole. I can't get a, but that's beside the point. So I tried two of those. So 200 pound plates on here, way too fucking much. So 100 pound plate at 45 on this style pendulum. Um, I don't know the brand, but this will be a good one. I'll try to get as close to failure without getting stuck. But if I do, whatever, good set. I'm gonna pick a different song though. <clears throat> Do kind of a on my toes style. No. <sighs> Yeah. 
Oh my goodness. Uh, oh, fuck. Okay. I think that might be enough pressing for me. My adductor's kind of going a little. Let's go back to leg extensions. And some sissy squats. All right, I know all that freaking smack I was talking about squats and heavy pressing. And today all I did was two sets of pendulums and those leg extensions. I kind of fucking, I think last time I was doing legs, single leg leg extensions, I was going a little too heavy and I keep pulling this little something or other. So honestly, the, yeah, I had to cut this one a little short, just a touch. Still fully pumped, but this is not how legs should look. This is a do as I say, not as I do style situation. But you tell me, is that a set of quads or what? I mean, this fucking outer head is like peeking over my knee. <gasps> Love it. Oh my goodness. Oh. Probably don't have the same allure, but still a quad. Still a fully pumped quad. You gotta remember, comparison is the thief of joy. Uh, but I'm fucking dying. Let's just get in the car and freaking roll. I'm not used to training early. All right. I'm not sure if you'd agree, but I'm beginning to suspect that quads off of fuck all sleep may not have been the best move but as a hard-headed lifter at heart could be worse could have skipped not cool not freaking cool yeah and i was uh and i'm not complaining i'm just kind of giving you some context here that was not very fun that was not very freaking fun even though I only did fucking five sets, but still, I f do feel better having finished them. So take with that what you will, but I definitely need to, well, it's nice that the training is now done and it's early, like it's 7.45 right now. So I have all day in a, well, not really to spend in leisure. Because I'm going to be kind of fucking traveling around. But all day to sit down, hydrate myself to the fucking extreme, and eat a bunch of airport food. As well as whatever I pack before I drive over there. So, I'll try my best to get back into, well not get back into fighting shape. Uh, but yeah, right now I am. I am freaking exhausted. What really hit me is probably the not, I, I don't even want to tell you how much sleep happened last night in between training triceps and then now we'll just, uh, we'll just leave that up to your imagination. But quads definitely stimulated. And even though that was only five sets, you gotta remember, it's kind of a big fucking muscle. They're much more taxing. And they demand much more load. And that's kind of me just being bro sciencey. Just like, what's better? Should you train? Because you can kind of explain your way out of anything when it comes to training. And some of it can sound reasonable. Some of it's kind of stupid too, but I'll get into that also. You, know, you could maybe say, oh, well, it's such a large muscle group. You require less sets during to train it because there's just more muscle fibers being activated. You know, so your leg is, your quad is five times bigger than your bicep. So you're activating five times the amount of muscle per set. You could say whatever. All I know is my quads are pumped and fatigued with a moderate amount of volume. So I think if I was really on my A game today, 
like if I got a good night's rest and then had some meals and then trained, I think I probably would have done more volume just because I would have felt better in the training. But the past is the past. All done. All I know is I hit my lift like I'm supposed to, regardless of my subjective feeling. Now I get to go about my day in peace and just focus on fucking gorging myself like a true bulker. So that's fun. That is freaking fun. So yeah, plan for the UK. I'm not exactly sure. I um we have a whole itinerary because I'm gonna we're gonna be over there, like me and the hostile guys are gonna be floating around for like a week. So we'll be lifting at probably a variety of gyms. And then we'll do a little uh, I'll I'll put the link in the description. Uh, there's gonna be a meet and greet at a certain gym. I've I don't know, I kind of I'm not the one that plans these things, so I get to kind of just take a back seat and let it happen. But no, I'll, uh, I'll put the link. So if you're around there, and turn up. Check it out. Very rare. Very rare sighting. I mean, I've never fucking been out of country, so... I, uh... It's always kind of funny whenever I go on trips in the States, like, be it... <clears throat> be it, like, with Hostile or just on, like, my own personal vacation or whatever with my family. I'm like, yeah, shit. You wouldn't expect me in fucking Georgia, would you? You wouldn't expect to see me at your Anytime Fitness in Colorado. In, um, in Evergreen. I think that's where it was. So, fuck, man. Even if you're going to miss it, even if you miss the Columbus Arnold or the UK one, I'm sure you'll see me around where you fucking least expect it. But you can guarantee I have pre-workout or you know, the tripod on my person at all times because I'm never more than a few hours from a lift at least when I'm running around out in the world yeah so I don't know what I'm gonna eat when I get home I have a little while before I have to drive <sighs> honestly I probably could have delayed the lift another like two hours <clears throat> and would have been a little bit more well rested uh, but then you kind of get caught in a state of delay, you know, because once you take that first, once you, you know, uncover yourself in blankets when you're in your bed, and then you say, okay, five more minutes. Really? You're just going to, you're going to lay in bed for just five more minutes and get nice and cozy. And then you're going to jump out of bed. You're going to feel like getting out of bed after five more minutes of warm comfort. And I don't mean that, like, literally right now, but I, I do mean that literally. You know, like, fuck. Five more minutes is never five more minutes. It's, uh, it's going to be in your best interest to just get your ass out of bed and get started on whatever you got to do instantly. Have some urgency. And uh, or, yeah, I want to preface this. Whenever I say anything kind of motivational like that, like, keep your room straight wake up early, go to bed early, you know, train hard, train on a consistent basis. Uh, well, okay, the training I'm, I'm really good about. Like, um, <laughs> I mean, I guess you can tell from the last year, the training has never been an issue for me. But when it comes to just kind of being a responsible dude, and like, and I, I mean, these are just fucking baseline childlike responsibilities, doing my homework on time, and waking up early and doing my chores. Like, that's kind of rudimentary shit. But that's the fucking... You know, that's the groundwork for whatever you're going to do for the rest of your day. You know? You're not going to be able to get dressed up for whatever you're about to do if your room's a total shithole and you got shit all over the place. Yeah, it's, you know. But, so what I'm trying to say here is whenever I say pretty generic motivational shit like I just talked about, like just... When you hear your alarm, just jump out of bed. Go to the bathroom, brush your teeth instantly. Turn on some music to get yourself going. When I say stuff like that, I'm not just talking to you. I'm also talking to me. You know, uh, when it comes to training in terms of consistency and intensity, then I'm going to say, okay, I'm with you here. right? I want to lead by example. 
But when it comes to a lot of everything else, frankly, I got some work to do. So, sort of saying this stuff out loud kind of makes me a little bit more motivated to do it, too. You know, like when it comes to, well, you know what I'm saying there. And I really find it just fucking cheesy when I hear people saying just generic motivational shit where it's like, you know, you got to grind every fucking day. You know, there ain't, it's not about luck, it's about hard work. I, or just insert anything. I mean, we see it all the time. There's like a trend of it going on. Like, feel good, hope core, hard work, grinding style videos. Dude's just like talking to a camera like this. Uh, but it's so insincere when the dude's saying it, you know he's not actually fucking living it, right? Like, uh, I mean, I'm sure you, you kind of know what I'm saying. So I don't want to be like that. Like, if you know I'm saying something and I'm like, oh, make sure you fucking fold your laundry and shit. I know you're giving me a side eye. Don't worry. I'm well aware of it. But, yeah. Legs fatigued. Quad, well, quads fatigued, not my full legs. So now I just got to pack up my suitcase. You know what? I'm so fucking lazy. I always pack, whenever I go on these trips, I pack all my fucking multivitamins. And I got like 20 little bottles of them. I always pack them. And then the action of like taking them somewhere with me, I never take them. I don't know what's wrong with me. I think I might, uh, I think I might just, well now that I say that, I sound like a chump for not doing it. But I think I might just bring my multivitamin only. Because I will cover most of my bases. Because I always fucking forget. And then, I don't know if you've ever, I mean, if you're a lifter, you know what it's like bringing your fucking pre-workout, your protein powder, or whatever else, in your luggage with you. Unless that's your carry-on bag, and you're, you're the only one manhandling it. Every time my bags go through baggage claim and checks and whatever, all my little fucking vitamin bottles get, like, popped. Because the guys are throwing the luggage, like... <laughs> I mean, like, I don't, I don't know, what do you fucking throw around like that? So, yeah. But either way, got to pack that shit up. Get some food in my system again. Mm. And I don't know how long I'm going to be sitting on this freaking plane for. I know I'm going to have to walk around and stretch or else my legs are going to fucking get stiffer than stiff. Uh, but I try my damnedest to sleep the whole time. I can tell I, I'm still in sleep debt a little bit from the Arnold... Columbus, uh, just because I'm so fucking, I got a bad sleep schedule and I really need to work on it, because I say this shit all the time and I'm not even living it like a fucking asshole, but there's three pillars of training, or there's three pillars of muscle growth, that is, which is of course the goal of the training that I'm, you know, fucking putting all this energy into, and it's the training itself, right? weight stimulation, we all get the deal there, followed by diet, you gotta eat enough calories and enough you know, decent proteins or whatever else to actually have the building blocks to build this muscle and recover from your workouts. And this counts for anything, but, you know, I'm talking about muscle building. And then that, oh my goodness, <clears throat> that third one, that third one, just as fucking important as the other ones, your sleep, your rest, and recovery, which I've been fucking slacking on. Like, I've been sleeping a lot. But not in a good way. Not in a good go to bed at dark, wake up at dawn kind of way. Which I don't know what's wrong with me too because I know that I feel good when I have a really good routine. Uh, in the summertime when I used to work at the city, uh, my routine was like fucking uh, like that, like clockwork. It was 4 o'clock or 4.30, alarm would go off, jump out of bed because I was nice and well rested. I went to bed early the night before. Do my cardio, play on my phone a little bit, shower off, put my work clothes on, gone from 6.30 to 2.30, have already packed my workout clothes and my pre-workout and everything else, straight to Planet Fitness, do my little lift, back home. And that is, uh, frankly, that's the routine I need to get back on now. Uh, fuck. I feel like such a child. Because when I'm left to my own devices, uh, I, I, uh, I'm so dopamine dependent, I end up fucking staying awake on my phone too long. 
frankly, I should probably do a little bit of a self ban and give myself like restricted hours. Yeesh. Modern problems. But I think that's all I gotta say. The, uh, the next few videos, or the next week of videos, may be sporadic in terms of their content. Because they're not all going to be lifts, uh, because I'm going to be working out, you know, with Fuad, and maybe Samson. I'm not, he's probably doing his own thing, because he's still, uh, he's peaking right now, because I'm going as a fucking lifter. He's going as a competitor. So, he's, uh, he doesn't need some little 260-pounder messing with him while he's working out. Uh, we'll see. So, if one of these videos is just me fucking saying some random shit while I'm eating a bowl of cereal, apologies. Apologies, but if you want to watch some training, <laughs> I mean, you know for a fact that you haven't watched all these videos. So if you still need a taste of uh, the actual sets and the pump check, just go back a few. Just go back a few. But I'll try to, I'll do my best. I'll try to get some clips. If I see anything scenic, I'll make sure to point the camera right at it. But that's all we got to say, man. Keep training hard. Keep eating hard. Keep sleeping hard. Another drill. That's a... Uh, I, I mean, I would never go so far as to say I just coined that term. There's a million t-shirts out there with fucking eat, sleep, train. But, I mean, there's a reason why those shirts fucking exist. It's because it's true, man. You know? Everything else is a... Uh, okay, one more, one, one more final note that I want to say before we get out of here. Uh, I, uh, I was talking to somebody, the Arnold... And the question arose, or maybe I, did I bring it up? I don't remember exactly. But basic premise was, what do I stand for? If I had to boil down kind of reasonably, what's something that I stand for pretty strongly? Right? Two words. Get big. Get freaking big. And if you take that at surface value then that's just a fucking shallow, you know, meaningless achievement. Oh, you got bigger muscles. Well, I mean, what does that do for you, really? You know, like, if you could press a button and become instantly jacked, I'm not going to lie, I would probably press it. But that's a fantasy world. You know, half the value of being big is, frankly, the work that had to go into it. You know? Because, I mean, I think about this a lot. It's kind of in a way, a status symbol, you know? Like, no, and I'm not talking about being a 260-pound or 300-pound freak. That's the, that's its own thing, of course. Not everybody's even fucking into that, right? So if you if you want to get that big because you want to, like, impress everybody and, like, you want people to think, wow, look at that guy. He's awesome. If that's all you want to do, you got to pick something else. That's, uh, this is not, like, perfectly mainstream to get like that. Uh, but... When you're walking around in good shape and like reasonably developed and toned, people notice, man. And honestly, uh, I mean, this might sound kind of fucking mean, but I know I treat people differently. When I go to class and I see somebody who I know from the gym, guess what? They're my buddy now. Without even knowing them, without even like seeing them, or without, well, of course I've seen them, but without even talking to them, I'm like, oh, fucking resonated, same wavelength. What's up, man? Did you do the homework? Yeah, I me mean, neither. I was doing legs. <laughs> right? So that could also just be because, you know, we're in kind of the same clique or whatever. But, you know, even other than that, man, it's kind of... And I don't mean being fucking jacked. But just in general, being in pretty good shape. Fuck, man. I think there's a reason why superheroes are fucking jacked. We're getting a little bit wild now with, uh... Because it's kind of... It's getting hard. If you're a kid coming up right now... You got the highest chance, for, especially a kid like in America or any really developed country, you got the highest fucking chance of getting, let's just say, bulking too hard because a diet of pure sweets and zero activity. Yikes. And I know I'm kind of fucking, I'm not setting an awesome example because I had a fucking ton of sweets, but you got to remember that's coupled with fucking hours of training per day uh half an hour coming from cardio usually not today i will admit 
uh, and then the other, you know, from fucking hard weight training. Uh, but unless you're, you know, actively being active, fuck man, dietarily, you know, in terms of the food that you're just going to be met with if you're running around the world without thinking about it, fuck man, you got some serious opposition. So take with that what you will. That's not necessarily. I don't know if I'm really making a point there. I'm kind of just making an observation. Uh, but that's it. That's all I got. So tomorrow, um, I've got chest on my agenda. Whoa. But we might adjust to see what we're actually going to train depending on, you know, who's doing what and where we are or whatever else. Because if we go to the gym and it's like, it's got way more awesome back equipment. And then we want to go somewhere else for chest the next day. And then we might we might flip it around. But uh, I guess we'll just have to see. So keep an eye out. We uh, The Hostile channel is going to be kind of pumping out these, you know, Arnold trip vlogs pretty quick. Just because, I mean, it's literally going to be happening in the moment. So if you got notifications on over there and here, then you should know exactly what's going on. Yeah. I will see you next time. And, oh, yeah, crap. I'm going to have to. These videos might be getting posted at weird hours. This is the biggest time zone change I've ever had. So don't be surprised if you get one of these at like 3 a.m. Uh, but either way, we'll see. So I'll see you next time.